So I just realized that it's been over two years since I first installed my home network rack and shared that with you here on the channel. Well, I've definitely made some updates and some changes in the past two years. I switched to Unify for my networking needs recently. Realized that this is probably not for everyone. We'll get into all that as I share my experience with you. There's no doubt that especially if you are building a smart home like me, your home network is extremely important. I believe it is the backbone of your smart home. So let's talk about the updates that I've made, everything that I am now currently using and why, and maybe whether any of this is something you should consider doing for your smart home. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy Apple home smart home with new videos and live streams every week. Today's video is sponsored by the controller for HomeKit app. More on that later in the video. Now I'm gonna give you a full tour of my entire network rack. So stick around for that. But first I wanna talk more about this section right here, my new Unify networking setup. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've been building a smart home for years. And when building out your smart home, it's super important to have a solid Wi-Fi network. I've used a few different routers over the years to include some of the top of the line Wi-Fi 7 mesh Wi-Fi systems. And to be honest, I think these plug and play mesh systems are great and might be the best option for most people. So why did I switch to Unify? And maybe you're wondering if you should too. And the main reason for me is that I wanted more control. So I've had very few issues using these various mesh systems over the years, but as my smart home has continued to evolve, I started to realize that having, you know, just more transparency and control over my network would only make my life easier. I'm constantly using and testing new smart home products for this YouTube channel. And with all that testing often comes a lot of troubleshooting having a very clear understanding of what's going on under the hood of my network and the ability to modify everything under that hood can be really helpful as I'm troubleshooting problem devices or my smart home as a whole. Now, two things that really stuck out to me that made me want to try Unify. One, the user interface looked really appealing. Not only having the ability to view and change things on your network, you know, but a nice interface to do so is great. And two, the fan base. I've never seen so many people share pride and enthusiasm over networking gear. I mean, we're, we're talking about routers here, but Unify seems to have a fan base that only reminds me of Apple's. People love Unify systems. There are Reddits and Discords and YouTube channels all about Unify. So that must mean something, right? Well, I decided to go all in. I wanted my network set up to work for me for years to come. So I got the Unify Dream Machine Pro Max. This is my Unify Cloud Gateway, also known as my router. Now this router does not include PoE ports or built-in Wi-Fi. So I needed to order a PoE switch as well as some Wi-Fi access points. I ordered the new Pro Max 24 port PoE switch and two of their U7 Pro Wi-Fi access points. These access points connect to the router via power over ethernet through this 24 port switch. A really cool thing about this Pro Max PoE switch is something new they call ether lighting. It's a feature that illuminates the ethernet ports to indicate port location, speed, or native network depending on your configuration. All this Unify gear totaled about $1,800 for me. This setup is certainly a bit overkill for most people, even for myself probably. There are some cheaper options that would have saved me a little bit of money that I could have done. For example, I could have gotten the standard 24 port PoE switch for about half the price as that Pro Max switch. But like I said, I did want to go all in on this and get the best that I could buy. Again, really future proofing uh, for hopefully years to come. Plus, Ether lighting, I mean, come on, <laughs> super cool. And another thing to keep in mind, many of the top of the line out of the box mesh Wi-Fi 7 systems like Netgear Orbi or others are actually pretty close in price. A big difference between those out of the box systems and the Unify system is going to be the setup and configuration. 
Since the Unify access points must be connected via ethernet, they could be a lot harder for someone to set up if you don't already have ethernet cables ran throughout your house. It takes much more planning and even the help of a professional sometimes to run wires for you. In addition to the hardware setup, there is the software setup and configuration. Again, here much less plug and play than those other systems. Configuring my new network to run perfectly with my smart home did require some time and a little bit of trial and error over the course of probably a few weeks to get it just right. Huge shout out to all of my channel members Thank you for your continued support of the channel. We have some Unify users in my members Discord server. In fact, I even have a whole channel set up there for Unify and it was some of these folks that were able to provide some great advice to me while I was going through my whole Unify setup process. With the help of those folks and the help of a few YouTube videos, I did eventually get everything streamlined and running great with my new Unify network. We're all having a blast building our smart homes together. If you'd like to join as a channel member and also get access to my member Discord server as well as other perks like early access to new videos and monthly member chats, click that join button down below next to the subscribe button. Now, while I'm not gonna dive deep here into Unify setups or configurations, I do wanna answer a few of the common questions that I get as it relates to my network for my smart home. One, yes, I do have a dedicated IoT network. That's a VLAN that I created specifically for adding my smart home devices to. This is a combined 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network. While most smart home Wi-Fi devices do connect to the 2.4 gigahertz band, I do have some here and there that will connect to the 5 gigahertz band like maybe certain cameras or my Apple TV or HomePod minis. All of my smart home devices, including HomeKit hubs like Apple TVs and HomePods are on this IoT network. Then I keep our iPhones, computers, and other important devices on a separate network. Now, many of the newer mesh Wi-Fi systems like the Orbi Wi-Fi 7 or TP-Link's Deco mesh system also have default IoT networks that you can easily enable uh, which is pretty nice and you can basically do the same thing here and it's a little bit easier to set up than Unify. Again, all of the configuration and setup was just more tedious with Unify. Uh, that's not to say you should shy away from it, just know that it's not exactly plug and play like some of those others, you know, it, that may make a difference. I got by for years using mesh Wi-Fi systems like this with my smart home, for my smart home, and I think you can too if, you know, all that other stuff just sounds like more trouble than it's worth. And believe me, I totally get it. I love to keep things as simple as possible here in my house, but I felt like this, you know, it was worth it in the long run. Being someone who is constantly testing new products and working on my smart home, I mean, this is basically my job nowadays as a full-time content creator. I really, really do love having the maximum amount of control over my network. And on top of the control, the interface, both the web version and the app are great. My Wi-Fi speeds are as good as they've ever been and the reliability of my network has been fantastic. So that is Unify. Now let's take a quick tour through the rest of my network setup. But first, let me tell you real quick about today's sponsor, the controller for HomeKit app. Now, if you're an Apple Home user and you have not heard of this app, you definitely want to check it out. Basically everything the Apple Home app is lacking, you can find in the controller for HomeKit app organize and create more advanced automations and advanced notifications, create backups of your HomeKit setup, store your device setup codes, and access a bunch of really useful maintenance tools and logs. A new feature even lets you create a detailed floor plan of your home using the LiDAR sensor on your iPhone or iPad and control your HomeKit accessories directly through that floor plan. Just a really powerful app for HomeKit users. You know, we're so quick to spend money on the latest smart home hardware and stuff like that, but rarely want to spend money on the software side of things. But I'm here to tell you apps like this can greatly improve your smart home experience. I personally think it's well worth it and it's an app that I always recommend to serious Apple home users. You can get a monthly, yearly, or lifetime license. Check it out, I'll put a link to it down below in the description 
Thanks to the developers for making such a great app for us HomeKit users, and big thanks for sponsoring today's video. All right, so now let me take you through the rest of my network rack. And it's kind of cramped in here, as you might can tell, this is also my broom closet and my coat closet. So bear with me, but I'm gonna flip the camera and show you everything in my rack one by one. So this box right here, this is my modem. Now that's very important. So my internet comes in to this. I have fiber, this is my fiber modem. So this is provided by the internet service provider. And then that will connect into my Unify Dream Machine Pro Max. So that is connecting right here. And then my UDM is connected to my switch right here through these SFP ports. Next up top, this is just an abode hub. So this is for a security system, a smart security system, works with HomeKit, had that for years. Over here, I have my Synology NAS. So I actually use this to run things like I've got HomeBridge on there. I'm also using scripted uh, as well as just video backup for all my videos. Uh, once again, real quick down here, we've got my Dream Machine router, my network switch, and this is just a patch panel. This is not necessary, but I got this just to make things a little bit cleaner and neater. This right here is my Real Link NVR. So all my cameras around the house plug into this. Also had this for a while. Um, eventually, I may just move to Unify cameras, or there's a new feature you can actually use third-party cameras like Real Link cameras with Unify. So I may be able to just use this also for my cameras in the near future. But uh, for now, I'm still using the Real Link NVR. And again, I've got those coming into HomeKit through Scripted, if you're interested. Some other things, I've got some smart home hubs up here. We've got Philips Hue. Behind that is my Lutron Caseta hub. This is my Acara M3 smart home hub. And then right here, also new uh, since the last video, we've got Home Assistant running. So I did have Homey Pro in here. I switched that out to use Home Assistant just for some testing. Been trying that out for a little while. We'll probably do a video on that sometime as well in the near future. Then moving down, this is another new addition. So this is a CyberPower UPS. That stands for uninterrupted power supply. And what this does is this will, uh, this is actually a battery backup and all my important stuff here in the rack is connected to this. We've actually had some power surges lately, a lot more than usual. So it prompted me to finally pull the trigger on one of these. You can see that with everything I have connected to this right now, we're getting an estimated runtime of 66 minutes. So this will last, according to this, over an hour uh, if we have a power outage, it will keep all of my networking gear still running. So we'll still have internet and all that for that amount of time. So this is really cool. I'm really glad to have that. And I'll put links to everything down below in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. They do have desktop versions, but I really wanted a rack mounted version that I could fit in here um, to just plug everything into that way. And then down here, we've got uh, another smart home hub. That's a Flick hub for my Flick smart buttons. This is just actually a, if you can kind of see in there, it's just a USB power bank. So um, I've got this connected into power and that way I can plug in some of these lower power devices like these hubs right here. Then over here we have an Eve room air quality sensor and I'm really just using this to measure the temperature and humidity here in this room, just so we can, you know, have an idea of how hot it gets in here. Currently getting pretty hot. <laughs> Really the only things new since the last time I did this video is of course the Unify gear and the UPS battery backup. Some of my smart home hubs are a little different. We now have the Acara M3 hub in here, which is newer and then a uh, home assistant, of course, as we're trying out that. And that is my network rack. I don't know about you, but I've been building out my smart home for many years and it seems like it's just always evolving and changing. I'm really happy with these recent updates to my network rack, but I've already thought about some potential upgrades that I may want to make in the not so distant future. Now, if you're also on a smart home journey of your own, be sure to subscribe for more smart home videos just like this every week. We also do live streams every week. You can also consider becoming a channel member to help support 
support this channel even further and get access to some cool perks like that member Discord server I was talking about earlier. Here's a video right here that covers my PoE camera setup and shows you some ways to integrate PoE cameras into HomeKit. Check that out if that sounds interesting to you. Here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.